PID, punti impresa digitale delle camere di commercio, sono il punto di riferimento per tutti gli imprenditori che vogliono digitalizzare la loro impresa e approfittare delle opportunità legate all'uso delle tecnologie 4.0 per entrare a pieno titolo nell'economia digitale. Ma in che modo i PID aiutano gli imprenditori? I PID, punti impresa digitale, offrono alle imprese strumenti specifici per misurare il loro livello di maturità digitale in chiave 4.0 e definire con maggiore precisione le strategie di miglioramento. Selfie 4.0 è un questionario di autovalutazione da compilare online che restituisce automaticamente un report sui livelli di digitalizzazione dell'impresa. Zoom 4.0 è una valutazione più approfondita, svolta direttamente in azienda insieme al digital promoter della Camera di Commercio, che permette di definire in modo più dettagliato i percorsi di digitalizzazione da intraprendere. Digital Skill Voyager, dedicato a studenti e lavoratori, è un test per misurare le competenze digitali attraverso un gioco online, un vero e proprio viaggio nel tempo a tappe in chiave digitale. I PID realizzano incontri di informazione e formazione sulle tecnologie 4.0. Così le imprese possono acquisire un quadro più chiaro e capire come migliorare, attraverso il digitale, processi di lavoro, prodotti e servizi. I PID si avvalgono di un network di professionisti che, nel ruolo di mentor, supportano gli imprenditori nelle scelte da compiere sui temi del digitale e del change management. Attraverso i PID si viene indirizzati verso i servizi avanzati proposti dagli altri attori del network Impresa 4.0, quali i Competence Center del mondo universitario, i Digital Innovation Hub e gli ecosistemi digitali dell'innovazione delle associazioni di categoria. Tutte le principali strutture che operano a livello nazionale per favorire l'innovazione e la digitalizzazione delle imprese si trovano su atlanteic4.0.it. I PID mettono a disposizione delle imprese dei voucher per l'acquisto di servizi di consulenza, formazione e tecnologie in ambito impresa 4.0. I voucher sono erogati direttamente dalla Camera di Commercio attraverso bandi ai quali possono partecipare imprese singole o, se condividono un progetto di innovazione, organizzate in gruppo. Che aspetti a entrare nell'economia digitale? Contatta il PID della tua Camera di Commercio o vai su .impresadigitale.camcom.it I PID, punti impresa digitale delle camere di commercio, sono il punto di riferimento per tutti gli imprenditori che vogliono digitalizzare la loro impresa e approfittare delle opportunità legate all'uso delle tecnologie 4.0 per entrare a pieno titolo nell'economia digitale. Ma in che modo i PID aiutano gli imprenditori? I PID, punti impresa digitale, offrono alle imprese strumenti specifici per misurare il loro livello di maturità digitale in chiave 4.0 e definire con maggiore precisione le strategie di miglioramento. Selfie 4.0 è un questionario di autovalutazione da compilare online che restituisce automaticamente un report sui livelli di digitalizzazione dell'impresa. 
Zoom 4.0 è una valutazione più approfondita, svolta direttamente in azienda insieme al digital promoter della Camera di Commercio, che permette di definire in modo più dettagliato i percorsi di digitalizzazione da intraprendere. Digital Skill Voyager, dedicato a studenti e lavoratori, è un test per misurare le competenze digitali attraverso un gioco online, un vero e proprio viaggio nel tempo a tappe in chiave digitale. I PID realizzano incontri di informazione e formazione sulle tecnologie 4.0. Così le imprese possono acquisire un quadro più chiaro e capire come migliorare, attraverso il digitale, processi di lavoro, prodotti e servizi. I PID si avvalgono di un network di professionisti che, nel ruolo di mentor, supportano gli imprenditori nelle scelte da compiere sui temi del digitale e del change management. Attraverso i PID si viene indirizzati verso i servizi avanzati proposti dagli altri attori del network Impresa 4.0, quali i Competence Center del mondo universitario, i Digital Innovation Hub e gli ecosistemi digitali dell'innovazione delle associazioni di categoria. Tutte le principali strutture che operano a livello nazionale per favorire l'innovazione e la digitalizzazione delle imprese si trovano su atlante.i4.0.it. I PID mettono a disposizione delle imprese dei voucher per l'acquisto di servizi di consulenza, formazione e tecnologie in ambito impresa 4.0. I voucher sono erogati direttamente dalla Camera di Commercio attraverso bandi ai quali possono partecipare imprese singole o, se condividono un progetto di innovazione, organizzate in gruppo. Che aspetti a entrare nell'economia digitale? Contatta il PID della tua Camera di Commercio o vai su .impresadigitale.camcom.it civiltà dell'amore, fratelli e sorelle, costruite senza stancarvi mai questa civiltà. Lavorate per questo, pregate per questo, soffrite per questo. Bene, buonasera a tutti. Good afternoon. Welcome to this session entitled The Republic of the Autonomies. I would like to welcome our illustrious guests for this afternoon. 
the president of the Italian Conference of the Regions and president of the Friulia Venezia Giulia region, Massimiliano Federiga. Maria Stella Gelmini, Minister for Regional Affairs and Autonomies. Gaetano Manfredi, the Mayor of Naples. And Andrea Prete, the President of Union Camere. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for accepting the invitation of the Rimini meeting. We're very happy to be with you. As you can probably understand from the title of this session, this uh, talk this afternoon is intended to be uh, an occasion to foster a discussion on the possibility of implementing forms of autonomy and more generally, it aims at uh, uh, enabling us to rethink relations between the various uh, levels of government and intermediate bodies. However, before we go into the details of our dialogue, we'd like uh, to kindly invite us uh, on stage. Luca Beccari, the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, International Economic Cooperation and Telecommunications of the Republic of San Marino. Thank you very much. As you know, the Republic of San Marino is the most ancient republic in in Europe, the oldest republic in 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 Europe, and they've always supported and followed the works of the Rimini meeting. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. For me, it's really a great um, honor and a pleasure to be able to participate in this session that focuses on uh, a topic uh, that strikes many chords uh, uh, when uh, it comes uh, to the relationship between autonomies and the Republic of San Marino. Our Republic uh, has uh, uh, a very long uh, uh, friendship, boasts a very long tradition of friendship with the Rimini meeting, and so we're really very happy to be here uh, on the occasion of this uh, uh, edition of the meeting. All countries are faced uh, with sudden and major challenges in the world. Most of these challenges cannot be predicted, and in facing them, uh, it is inevitable what needs to be managed locally, what needs to be managed uh, at a national, at a central level, and this from an administrative uh, or logistic viewpoint. Uh, this is something that uh, can uh, be found in any textbook of economics. I mean, this is the eternal trade-off. And this is something that has become more and more evident, especially in recent years. This has been shown by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as by uh, the way in which we are currently managing uh, the repercussions, the effects of the uh, conflict between uh, Russia and the Ukraine. Uh, it is apparent that there is no ideal solution. And the Republic of San Marino can provide in this a, a fruitful example. We are probably the only country in Europe it's one of the few examples in Europe of how you need to organize service at a very uh, small scale. So services which are sometimes managed nationally, centrally, when it comes to larger states. For example, we have an area of over of about 62 square kilometers, and in that small area, we have to provide justice, health, public security services in an autonomous way with our own resource, uh, resources. However, with the needs that all the countries expect, because the level of uh, health, justice, and public uh, safety is something that is perceived by citizens irrespective of uh, the size of the country where they live. The approach to local autonomies, or in a way to um, entities of administration that are not centralized, uh, 
probably enables to be more effective. Uh, and in this, I would say that the Republic of San Marino can provide a useful example. I will be happy to listen to the contribution of the guests uh, invited to this session. I believe the talk, that the topic that they're going to discuss is uh, uh, something, is a topic that can and should be addressed uh, both nationally as well as supranationally. For example, when it comes to the relationship between the European Union and the member states, and uh, this will also concern San Marino when the association agreement is finalized, uh, uh, there is no longer autonomy outside these borders. And this is something uh, that we see in international organizations when you see that there are uh, supranational um, agreements made with repercussions uh, to all member states uh, to these organizations. So this is an important moment. Uh, we're going to listen to a very interesting uh, conversation and a topic that uh, we're called upon to discuss, uh, especially in these times. Thank you very much. Thanks to Luca Beccari. You have uh, provided us with a right, with a nice introduction. Thank you very much. You will probably remember that in 2017, uh, you have uh, you took part in some consultative referendums, probably in uh, in 2017 in Lombardy and the Veneto region. In other regions, these referendums uh, um, received huge consensus, and similar requests have come from uh, other regions and territories. Article 116, third paragraph of our constitution, namely states that further special forms and condition of autonomy can be assigned and attributed to the regions. So this means that much work can be done, can still be done. And in this respect, I would also like to remind you that even Prime Minister Draghi himself in his speech to the Senate of the 20th of July uh, mentioned the, and I quote, the discussion for the recognition of differentiated forms of autonomy, end of quote, as one of the commitments that a future government would have to face. Sometimes, uh, especially it was the case, this was the case of the pandemic, uh, some people might have thought that the work towards this achievement uh, uh, had slowed down. And yet, the issue of autonomy basically concerns the whole of our history. This is not something that should be addressed by experts alone. Of course, this is a technical topic. Uh, but without having to recall what Father Sturzo and Einaudi said, this is a topic that has run throughout our, the, the whole of our Republican history. And I think that also the implementation of the NRRP has led us uh, to consider additional risks and possibilities. So you may have more space, greater spaces of freedom and autonomy accompanied by appropriate forms of responsibility. And these spaces can foster and encourage that move of the human being uh, and the intermediate bodies and the individual human bodies that the philosopher Capograssi called the major centers of social energy. This meeting, especially Cardinal Zuppi, Bishop, uh, Cardinal Zuppi has basically recalled these centers very often. And the same was done by Premier Draghi, Prime Minister Draghi this morning. So, I think that we should be brave in rethinking the relations between institutions, territories, and intermediate bodies with a view to have horizontal and vertical subsidiarity capable of uh, enhancing the talents and the features and the characteristics of everyone without leaving anyone behind in order to uh, foster uh, this um, attitude as protagonists uh, of both the individual and of associations. This is something that uh, also uh, Giuliano Amato, the president of the Italian Constitutional Court, recalled in his contribution to the meeting. This evening, we are fortunate to listen to renowned personalities. They uh, represent the state, the regions, uh, 
a major city in southern Italy, as well as intermediate bodies and the world of associations. So, so I would like uh, uh, to thank them all once again for their presence. I would like to start with the first round of contributions. And my question to you is the following. I would like to um, ask you what is, in your opinion, the possibility to favor, to foster forms of autonomy? What are the opportunities and what uh, are the possible risks we are faced with? I would like to start with President Federica and would then like to leave the floor to the other guests. Once again, thank you for uh, being our guest this evening. First of all, thanks to you for your kind invitation. The Rimini meeting always succeeds in setting up uh, conversations uh, that delve much deeper into the slogans that politics has accustomed us to. So it is an occasion to uh, explain to people topics like the topic of differentiated autonomy, which is not so easy to understand. We were talking uh, with Minister Gelmini uh, before. I mean, what will be the future of differentiated autonomy? This is a, a topic that should be delved deeper and that has a direct impact on citizens' life. And I'll explain to you why from my personal viewpoint. I would like to, um, first of all, um, draw on what you said before at the beginning. So the pandemic with relation to the um, protagonism of regions, which became more and more important in uh, uh, facing uh, the pandemic, both with the second uh, uh, minister, uh, second government of uh, um, Conte, of Prime Minister Conte, and with uh, um, Prime Minister Draghi. There has been a conversation between territories and the regions. At the beginning of the pandemic, I remember regions like Friuli Venezia Giulio who would send health personnel to other regions. And the very same conference of the regions uh, served as a binding element between the various uh, areas in our territory, in our country. On the other hand, we saw that in times of difficulties, the alliance between the central state and the regions is particularly important to provide answers in difficult moments. We were faced, we coped with a pandemic that nobody had experienced before and nobody knew the, the answers. And it was only through this institutional alliance that uh, we were able to provide uh, uh, with to provide effective answers. Actually, uh, there are people today who are basically telling us what we should have done two years before, but that's not fair because actually it is as if you were watching a, a soccer game and at the end you tell what the coach, what the trainer should have done. That's it not like that the things go. I remember, for example, a meeting with uh, the then Prime Minister Conti at 2 o'clock in the night uh, uh, to uh, decide over certain measures. I mean, for the first time, it was the regions who decided over, for example, the guidelines for reopening times. Uh, this uh, was a, an occasion to highlight the protagonism of the regions, and it also uh, um, led us to um, a renewed discussion on differentiated autonomy. Uh, Minister Boccia had started this pathway. Minister Gelmini reactivated it later on. And I'm sure that also the future government will have to face this issue. As regards the center-right coalition, fortunately, the center-right uh, coalition has in its program uh, the need to continue the topic of differentiated autonomy. And I'm saying this as president of an uh, autonomous region. So we need to focus on differentiated autonomy because our goal, is to, as our goal is to identify what the best way is to provide services to citizens. We've seen differentiated autonomy over the years as a, a fight for power between the central government and the regions, but it's not like that. We simply have to be very detailed and analytical and decide whether a given service can be provided in a more efficient way by the state or by the region. 
And if resources are more efficiently spent, and then based on that, we need to decide to whom has to be assigned with that central function. This meeting has a very precise and topical title, a passion for the person. Politics should actually adopt a similar title, a passion for the citizen. Politics, politics should not be a fight of self-protection for the state or a fight for self-satisfaction for the regions to have more competencies. We need actually to understand what's the best or most efficient way to provide services. For certain services, regions are more effective. For others, it's the central seat. But you shouldn't apply any ideology in here. That's why I said that the center right a coalition intends uh, in its program to pursue a differentiated uh, autonomy, but it shouldn't be a partisan uh, kind of battle. This must be a shared objective between uh, majority and minority um, topic. Uh, and I'm saying this as president uh, of Conference of the Regions as well as uh, president of a region uh, who has who is an autonomous region because we have exclusive uh, competencies and this is guaranteed by the constitution so uh, this might be a topic that is not that uh, much of interest for our region however i believe that uh, uh, a greater efficiency of the state uh, can be useful for everybody and this uh, of course goes through a reorganization of the institutions I have uh, one last thing to add. Differentiated autonomy is not something that should be exclusively granted to the northern regions, for example, uh, Lombardy or the Veneto region or Emilia-Romagna, which has required it, or the Liguria region. This is something that represents an occasion for all <coughs> Italian regions. Uh, from south, from the south to the north. And I think that especially southern Italian regions have become aware of the fact that on certain issues it's important to provide immediate answers and have their own competencies. I'm sure that many regions in the south of Italy can go on with this project. Autonomy is not something that divides the country, but that rather provides more efficient institutional organization. This is the concept that should be conveyed to citizens. If uh, more efficiency means that if you have money, the money must be spent better. That should be the objective of differentiated objective. That was at the basis of the referendums in Veneto and Lombardy, and that uh, is at the basis of the Emilia-Romagna referendum. We're talking about three regions with different uh, political guidance, however, with one same objective, which is that of providing tangible uh, answers to their citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much, President Federica, Minister Gelmini. You've recently um, joined the political party Azione uh, with Cardo Calanda, and I found actually this um, pairing, autonomy and responsibility. Can you please clarify uh, how you see autonomy? First of all, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thanks to the Rimini meeting for existing. Beyond the many topics that you organize, I mean, there's always lots of energy that you actually experience here. So it's always a very nice thing to spend some time here. And also thank you uh, also for the courage of being um, this here this evening after talking about autonomy after a very intense day of meeting. And we even had the meeting with uh, Prime Minister Mario Draghi. When I was invited to discuss about autonomy, I thought that, I mean, it might have uh, uh, sounded a bit uh, brave to discuss about autonomy. But then I also thought that actually the Rimini meeting is precisely the place where um, uh, subsidiarity is at home. Uh, and where dialogue uh, is always fostered, and that's basically the Rimini meeting. And the very same autonomy stems from the principle of subsidiarity. Uh, it is something that should be applied, however, uh, between the various government levels. That's why I think that we, it is appropriate to talk about autonomy here on the eve of an already very uh, hot uh, political campaign, uh, touching upon lots of uh, topics where certain topics are priority topics, like, for example, the cost of energy, the, the soaring costs of energy, um, 
uh, as well as many others. I think that also the issue of reforms uh, that might be probably more theoretical, more distant from citizens has, in fact, a direct impact because it can help overcome uh, the gap between the north and the south of Italy in uh, applying the subsidiarity principle and improving the quality to our citizens as well as in uh, reducing the cost of services. So I think that I really hope that the work we have done uh, up to now is not thrown away. Uh, the method should not be changed. Uh, much is being said, uh, there's much talk, there's much discussion about the Draghi method. Uh, and this applies also to this issue. We've tried basically to apply reforms that did not alter the application of Article 116. All too often the topic of autonomy is uh, in a way um, attached uh, to misconceptions, like the fact that, for example, it is it refers uh, to some kind of a battle to appropriate to get to to uh, to get resources or a way to increase inequalities, and not to guarantee the same citizenship rights. That's the main reason why, after 20 years, autonomy has not yet been implemented. But we decided to. Um, set up a different project, a different autonomy project for a number of reasons. First of all, because uh, those who are in favor of autonomy are not uh, uh, in favor of a uh, disruption of the constitution or uh, disgregation of the constitution. That's quite the opposite. Article 116 of the constitution foresees uh, this topic of the differentiated autonomy. So if we uh, are to comply with the Italian constitution, then autonomy is not something that goes against the constitution. It's quite the opposite. We are respecting, we are complying with Article 116 of the constitution as well as Article 5 of the constitution, which states that we have just one and a republic, uh, which, however, fosters uh, decentralization and autonomy. So autonomy has to be framed within uh, the national constitution, and this is what our constitution enshrines. I also believe that if we are to uh, establish uh, a trust again between the state and the citizen, it's important to uh, clearly define who does what. And so we wanted to uh, implement this uh, reform of the autonomy within the more general framework of the Consolidation Act on the um, of local government, because the elimination of provincial bodies of provinces and this uh, uh, and the uh, reform of the urban areas uh, creates confusion among citizens. This is a very important topic. I really hope that uh, any future government uh, uh, will start addressing again the topic of provinces, their role, the resources to attach to them, and the same applies to metropolitan. Uh, cities. And the same applies to the fact that it is necessary to foster the union between small municipalities and support the link between the center and the peripheries, as well as to support mountain areas, small islands, internal inland areas, the south of Italy, as well as more uh, the areas that are more distant from the capital. I believe that it is precisely here that we can uh, re-establish trust between the state and the citizen. And that is why we had started with a number of reforms. There was an act on uh, mountain areas. There were 200 million euros ready. They are set aside to, in a way, try and overcome the problem of the uh, depopulation of mountain areas and to allow young people to start up their business in uh, mountain areas in order to provide more services there. So we had, for example, uh, foreseen uh, um, forms of rewarding doctors willing to uh, be present in mountain areas. At the same time, the Italian parliament had started a reform for uh, the for Rome. Uh, 
as a capital of Italy. And we had also started the, the uh, law number four, the framework law number four. However, the end of the Draghi government uh, stopped this process. That's a pity, because if we are to guarantee growth, competitiveness, and development to Italy, then reforms are not less important than investments. And the redefinition of a solid architecture between the various levels of government is key. There's very little talk about that. This is not a topic whose benefits can be immediately perceived. However, today, the very first ones who will pay uh, the price of this clash between the various levels of government are uh, families, so households and the companies. So we tried to reduce uh, by 40% the uh, forms of uh, uh, addressing the constitutional court. We did not violate the constitution in this respect, but Prime Minister Draghi wanted to give a more central role to mayors and local administrators. And with this goal in mind, we set up forms of, uh, uh, in a way, mediation uh, in order to reduce the number of litigations and in order to reduce the number of uh, litigations in this way. We then uh, fostered autonomy, trying to, in a way, uh, involve the south of it. Of course, we, we were not able to convince, for example, Mayor uh, Manfredi of, Napol of Naples, but with uh, uh, Minister Carfagna, we, for example, financed nurseries with 1.2 billion euros. We financed uh, uh, transport for the disabled. We worked, for example, with a committee, uh, with the cost committee, in order to finance all the essential performance levels. The Constitution guarantees uh, um, uh, a special funds for this. But we wanted to favor not only regions like Lombardy or Veneto, but also other regions like the Emilia-Romagna region or Tuscany or Piedmont and the Liguria region. There are many regions which actually require autonomy, many regions who are asking for transparency, uh, tax federalism, clarity in knowing who is responsible for what, and also in decision-making. Decision-making that has to be carried out at that level that it therefore can be more effective. This is something that had been done. We were on the verge, so to say, of approving these measures. I really hope that this work can be further improved but not thrown away. Because even if we are in a, an electoral campaign, we cannot constantly start from scratch. There are good things that have been done. Resources have been found to give, to implement autonomy and the other reforms. I really hope that all of this can be carried on by future governments. Otherwise, this country starts from scratch again. So we lose a lot of time and we lose competitiveness. And this is these are not the times in which we should, in a way, uh, not cooperate. And the Draghi government, in this respect, had done a lot of uh, steps forward on the autonomy. And I really hope that this, is, this, is not, this whole work is not thrown away. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Germini, for somehow recapping what the government uh, has done on these topics. So, Mayor, Mayor Manfredi, so I read a couple of interviews of yours. You have also managed the university, so you certainly played a key role as a public representative, and now you are managing a big city like Naples. So, which are the major risks, in your opinion? Are there slippages risks in terms of social cohesion? And uh, I mean, which are the critical aspects to be considered the most? Thank you very much again for being here with us, and the floor is yours. Well, thank you 
for the invitation because it is key to debate this topic that is key for the future of the country as well as for its organization. I've been rector, president of the rector's conference and uh, uh, university minister. And I've always strongly uh, defended the autonomy of university that is enshrined in our constitution. So it's not either or. I mean, it's not a matter of choosing the the fact that we do need to understand how to implement autonomy uh, in order to both comply with uh, the state's uh, rights and the citizens' rights. So I have a number of uh, remarks to share with you here this evening, and I think that these remarks may be useful when it comes to Italy's uh, uh, perspectives for the future. First of all, which are the areas that can be somehow affected by autonomy? There are some policies like energy policy, infrastructure policies, port policies, or uh, primary heritage assets, or high school training. Well, these are areas uh, requiring a European approach in order to be managed at best. If we want to take up these major challenges, the national level risks to be too limiting to tackle such huge uh, challenges. So when it comes to autonomy, it is important to set the right scene for the debate. And I'm thinking about governmental and uh, even more so European level topics. Otherwise, we risk uh, to target to the wrong level when it comes to energy policies or water management. These are topics that should be treated at national level. When it comes to defining the perimeter of autonomy, this is certainly the priority, and this should go into interest of, uh, I mean, the whole country, not just of the specific regions. So it is important to define which are the areas that can be managed at best uh, with autonomy. To this morning, President Draghi talked about uh, the European sovereignty, and I remember talking a lot about uh, autonomy when I used to work for uh, the academic world. And if you want to really compete today with the major key players, we need to be uh, players at the European level, not at the regional level. That is why I think that these are the issues requiring clarification. Then, as a mayor of the largest southern city of Italy, as well as uh, of a huge metropolitan area, as a Minister Germini used to say, it is quite a responsibility. We always talk about the autonomy of regions, but what about the autonomy of metropolitan areas or cities? Well, we have Greater Naples that has 3.5 million inhabitants, so it is really huge. So if we do not adopt the right approach, we risk to create a new form of regional centralism. On top of that, Massimiliano said it very suitably and appropriately. We, the real issue is to put citizens at the center and um, serve them with the best uh, possible level of service. So we deliver uh, social assistance services, welfare services, transport services, uh, schooling services, educational services, uh, so a wide range of services that uh, are beneficial to citizens, and especially in uh, greater urban areas, uh, there are a high level of complexity, and uh, we have uh, very, very little room for maneuver when it comes to autonomy. Again, it is absolutely important uh, to consider the right uh, relationship between uh, center, region, and citizens, and as well, uh, great metropolitan areas, well, we need to consider that. And I think that this point of view shared by mayors of larger cities, but also smaller cities. So we really need to enhance uh, even more 
uh, such intermediate levels because we have the we have Italy that is made of municipalities. So when it comes to autonomy, well, we really need to consider a whole reorganization and redistribution of competencies because today, uh, ironically. Municipalities are those really delivering services to citizens, but they have the lowest level of autonomy. So they are hyper controlled, they have complex fiscal management issues because they really have to directly, I mean, get the taxes. So this creates a lot of stress in citizens that are. Uh, sometimes not happy with how things are managed. And then there is uh, quality. It's not because I'm uh, the mayor of a large southern city like Naples so that I need to talk about this because the real challenge for the country today has to do with the social classes and social equality. So the goals of the National Recovery Resilience Plan when debated uh, in Brussels, uh, put at the center the reduction of gaps of any kind, uh, gender gaps, uh, territorial gaps, uh, all sorts of gaps. Today in Italy, we have uh, unacceptable gaps. They are unacceptable because they have an impact uh, on uh, the constitutionally guaranteed rights of citizens, for instance, the right to have access to quality education, the right to have access to health care services, the right to mobility, the right to services for the most vulnerable ones, for the disabled ones. The expenditure capacity exists in our country varies a lot from area to area. Our country is extremely patchy and average income varies a lot. In Naples, average income is less than the half of the average income in Milan, so the fiscal capacity of the municipality as a consequence is much lower, less than half than the financial capacity of Milan, for instance. So if we somehow do not properly distribute resources who will increase the gaps and not reduce them. The real challenge today is to guarantee autonomy, but do that by fully respecting the rights of all in full compliance with the equity principle that should be considered in several terms, a territorial, a gender, and a graphic gaps. But the, I mean, citizens should consider uh, this interest as a general interest. If we want to make Italy grow more and more, we need to start working on the less developed areas because access to the job market for the youngest, uh, the access to the job market by women, having a higher and better education, well, these are key rights. And if we look at the regions, we see that these differences are still there and still prior, prior to clashing. So I think that they are unacceptable. I'm not against uh, the autonomy principle, not at all. I think that this is an added value. What I'm against of is uh, a kind of autonomy not likely to guarantee equality to everybody. And most of all, a kind of autonomy that could affect uh, the uh, unitarian strategic vision of the country that we desperately need. We will go through a certainly not uh, easy phase, uh, even though I do agree with President Draghi with, when he said that our energy, imagination, creativity, and uh, as a person from Naples, I must say that there we are particularly good at that. Well, Draghi is convinced that it, thanks to all of our features and qualities, we can still overcome problems. But again, all citizens need to feel to be equal in front of the state to say, regardless of our reforms and our actions, we need to uh, pursue to a general protection goal. So we need to protect everybody's interests. So again, any kind of uh, idea of autonomy can always and should always be implemented uh, in a positive way because otherwise uh, if autonomy is uh, just uh, tend to 
promote differences so they want and can be effective. We need to define the minimum levels of service. We need to have balanced funds in order to guarantee the right level of financing. We need to have a constitution guarantee dates, uh, rights, sorry. We need the right administrative capacity to manage all this, but the tools are there. So at the end of the day, I do believe in a sort of empowering autonomy. And uh, I am ready and open to discussion as many other colleagues. So it is important to guarantee key principles, otherwise you simply work against the citizen's interest and not in favor of the citizen interest. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now let's um, first uh, let's finish this first round with Andrea Prete, the president of the Chambers of Commerce, uh, Italian Chambers of Commerce. Um, why do you think uh, that it is important to focus on uh, these relations that are apparently far away from uh, the uh, life of businesses and associations, which, however, uh, have major repercussions on your work. What's your perspective on this? First of all, thanks uh, to the organizers for the invitation and uh, congratulations to, to them for this uh, fantastic um, edition of the Rimini meeting uh, because actually um, what is uh, we are discussing is at the very core of what's taking place at the Rimini meeting. That's really an extraordinary event. I would like to bring to your attention the point of view of enterprises. After President Federica, Minister Gelmini, and Mayor um, Manfredi, I would like to bring you the voice of enterprises. We are the system of the Italian Chambers of Commerce, and this system, the Italian system of Chambers of Commerce, has written, recently been subject to a reform. Minister Gelmini was mentioning before the unfinished reform of provinces. The reform of the Italian Chambers of Commerce was finalized. The number of Chambers of Commerce went from 105, and the um, final expected number of Chambers of Commerce is 60. Uh, so it is being finalized. Uh, so the process has been going on for about eight years. And we've uh, received uh, uh, quite uh, a number of uh, oppositions uh, uh, coming from the territories. And that is because uh, whenever you are dealing with a change, uh, this change poses some difficulties. And we are an example of that. Even if, like I said, we are finalizing the process. We did so simply because we said that there's a law, a law for the unification of chambers of commerce, uh, and uh, actually uh, whenever there was excessive resistance, uh, uh, that was probably because they felt better than the others, and this is something that we did not want, and we kept uh, uh, back straight, so to say. I believe that autonomy is a means and not an end. Uh, let me explain you why. If you ask any enterprise, any Italian enterprise, uh, uh, and ask them uh, what the company expects from the government, uh, from actually those who govern them, uh, the enterprises want just one thing. Uh, they want things to be, they want their life to be simplified. Uh, whether this simplification comes from the central state or from the regions or other institutions, that's not what matters for chambers of commerce. We've, uh, uh, we have a, a working group on simplification within Union Camera that sees the participation of all major professional associations, uh, the Industrialists Association, uh, the Artisans Association, uh, um, and basically all of them. And what we have tried to discuss is the uh, bottom-up 
form of simplification. The important thing is to provide uh, tangible signals. Uh, so the Italia Cane Research Institute uh, uh, reported uh, that if we reduced by one third the time that companies spend in red tape, we would recover from 0.8 to 1 percentage point of our GDP simply by reducing the time devoted to bureaucratic issues. In this country, very strange things still occur. So we uh, are in favor of the circular economy. However, we make it difficult to make a uh, product recyclable because we believe there is a way. So you have uh, to, in a way, struggle with uh, a legislation that makes it difficult for you to understand whether that product is a recyclable product or a waste. And in the environmental field, uh, you may you run the risk of being subject to uh, criminal sanction, penal sanctions. So this is absurd. So, for example, if you you cut the grass in your lawn by yourself, you can uh, landfill to the organic uh, fraction. But if you come, if you call special companies, that become a special waste, and that's absurd. We know that companies today are faced with major problems, which is that of the cost of energy, the rising, the soaring cost of energies. The world of enterprises is going through very difficult times, has been going through very difficult times for three years. We need, we strongly need to be depend, to be independent when it comes to energy and Authorizations are still very long. In 2018, 1,000 projects were submitted for the installation of renewable uh, plants, and only 9% were approved. And then, do are we still complaining that we depend on Russian gas when we may have solutions for, to our problem here? This is actually what companies are looking for. So the fact is that we, as long as they are within the borders of their own uh, plant, they know what to do. But the, the problems come after, uh, I mean, outside the companies themselves. And this is uh, the same throughout Italy. This is a fundamental issue. And you see the reasons of everybody. Um, but we need to be convinced of the fact that this uh, is a process that brings about benefits to everybody. And there cannot be any derogations on this. There are lots of differences between the south and the north of Italy. Minister Germini knows this very well. If you refer to historical expenses, of course, uh, the subjects which uh, who spent less in certain fields uh, uh, are in a way will receive less of course we need to apply the essential levels of performance with new standards the other day i was listening to governor fontana and when he was asked what his uh, flagship project was he basically said, I want all people from the, all the citizens of Lombardy to have the same possibilities. That's legitimate. In Milan, we have a GDP that is three times as high as Pavia. In Veneto, Verona has a GDP that is twice as much as Veneto. In Emilia, the same between Bologna and Ferrara. So uh, applying uh, President Fontana's concept, uh, uh, is if Pontana were the prime minister, I would be happy because he would say that all Italians uh, need to have the same possibilities. This is what we uh, aspire to. But when uh, it comes to the system of enterprises, I mean, that uh, uh, is something which is for us is important. But for us, the most important objective is uh, to have uh, the, another possibility, last year we had an economic recovery. We were the first in Italy. That means that a productive system works well when it is placed in the conditions to work. And then we also have to consider that 
the situation is uh, rapidly and swiftly changing on a daily basis. We had uh, the impossibility to dismiss people during the COVID pandemic, and then at the end of that, uh, we feared that we would have uh, uh, had a high unemployment rate, and now we don't find people to hire. The a system of chambers of commerce is also paying lots of attention to the employment field. And we're also thinking what we can do to get the skills uh, that companies need. There's yet another problem besides set of energy that we do not find professional profiles, the right professional profiles. We need to uh, make sure that there's a strong misalignment between the educational field and the needs of companies. So these are topics that are cross-cutting. I haven't probably gone too much into the topic of autonomy, but actually I think that these are more significant topics for companies. Thank you. Now a second round, and I would like to start from you, President Prete. So we're going to go and vote in one month. So, what are your main concerns and also your somehow wishes? Because it is interesting to know your take and uh, you may communicate that to political representatives. So, which are the proposals that you can share with us on these topics and also on other related topics such as implementation of the national resilience and recovery plan that involves so many sectors. I think about the university, the sector I'm working uh, in, but also there are uh, many other areas of the civil society that are involved. So President Prete, I start from you. Right, so this morning we heard the speech of President Draghi and there was a standing ovation welcoming him. And I think that was uh, an acknowledgement of the achievements reached by his government. And uh, he was celebrated because of the results he got. And certainly, Minister Germini, being part of that government, deserves the same kind of uh, acknowledgement. And so, again, uh, I think that uh, the government certainly did great things. And so, all the parts involved the need to be acknowledged recognition. But still, as representative of the Chambers of Commerce, we do not want to take a specific stand. But still, what I wish in my capacity is to have a government made of skilled people with a high level of expertise because I mean, uh, being uh, governed and managed by skilled and knowledgeable ministers uh, and uh, politicians is extremely important. Uh, and mo mo most of all, it is also important to have competent and also credible people who can enjoy credibility at an international level. So. When it comes to bureaucratic simplification, this is one of our major requests. And secondly, reducing the fiscal burden would be welcome. But then we know the surge of inflation, and inflation is having a huge comeback after 20 years. Uh, many people do not know what it means to have a two-digit inflation rate. So this is to be tackled as soon as possible. So. If you reduce the purchasing power of people, well, things get really serious. So I hope that these will be properly addressed. And then implementation of the National Resilience Recovery Plan. And also, it would be advisable to somehow follow in the footsteps of the Draghi government because well, things were done properly. And I hope that the things will be done properly also in the future by the next government. 
regardless of what it will be. Well, Mayor, the floor is yours. Well, I start uh, with two key things. First of all, the National Recovery Resilience Plan that is uh, a strategic opportunity for the whole country. And uh, certainly it entails uh, complex activities and uh, a rigorous timing. But uh, I, I mean, it is so much worse. And uh, we need to consider the growing difficulties related, for instance, uh, to infrastructure reforms uh, because uh, the surge uh, uh, in the cost of raw materials may pose a problem, but still we need to keep going with that. On top of that, I would like to talk about the problem of finding, uh, I mean, uh, workers uh, and sometimes uh, it's a problem of labor. You do not find the right, uh, I mean, uh, labor for the jobs that are available. And uh, so, again, this poses a major threat and problem. And these uh, affects not just uh, small uh, municipalities, but also larger ones, such as mine. And again, the government uh, had tried to launch uh, a fund for the reassessment of costs, and I think that th this should be done also in the future. And then we have um, the cost of living. This also poses a problem. Well, today inflation is a big, big issue, and recently well, I had to go and do grocery shopping because I was on holiday and I was struck by the huge increase in the price of commodities. And uh, for an average uh, single income family can be a problem. But also we have many Italians that are living below the, I mean, poverty threshold, especially in the south of Italy. And this is a problem because everything has become more expensive, even the school books. So again, trying to do something for that is a big priority because if uh, the most vulnerable can't uh, somehow have certainties, you risk to jeopardize social cohesion. Instead, we need to guarantee social cohesion because that means uh, uh, growth and prosperity. I'm the mayor of a beautiful city, but it is also a quiet, uh, difficult one, a complicated one. And uh, every day when I walk along the streets, I see the problem and which are the major problems. And so we need a lot of unity and uh, we need to do our best to somehow have the right social agenda because uh, households need to be sustained and supported. So regardless of it's going to win the elections and form the new government. So social cohesion should be a top priority because without social cohesion, there is no development, no growth. And again, so I think that uh, politicians should keep that high on their agendas. Minister Gilmini. Well, I would also like to start with the National Resilience and Recovery Plan because I think that all political parties should pledge and commit to fully implement the National Resilience and Recovery Plan regardless of who's going to win the elections because otherwise being, I mean, uh, medium-term investment, it is clear that uh, the uh, next government uh, will somehow make the most uh, of what the government uh, of Mr. Draghi has done. So it is clear that uh, Italy has to somehow express the full potential of the plan, 
The plan is an investment for future generations. It means investing in infrastructure, broadband reforms, but that is also somehow a way to guarantee and perpetuate the credibility of Italy, because otherwise these could be considered as something that uh, is not so uh, topical. And again, hearing some politicians that say that that plan could be renegotiated or changed uh, scares me because uh, this is the very first time that Italy shares its data. It is the first time that uh, uh, sort of cross-cassing uh, plan for the future of our generations, I mean, is laid out, uh, is something historical. So we cannot consider this plan as a minority plan. This is the uh, agenda for the future of Italy. So uh, this must be a sort of uh, unchangeable fact. And then, of course, there are other problems because inflation is going so fast, almost two digit. Well, that causes a serious threat to the purchasing power of people, of families. And again, there are major problems relating to energy supplies, raw materials, but we should not trust those who say that there are miracle recipes or magic solutions to fix problems. There is no panacea. So first of all, restoring the purchasing power of salaries should be key. And that is why the fiscal wedge should be kept. We need, on the one hand, to make labor costs less uh, uh, burdening, but on, on the other hand, we need to somehow restore the purchasing power. So the fiscal wedge uh, is a key topic, and we need to keep working on that because we have the lowest uh, level of salaries and the highest labor costs. We are the only country in Europe with such a situation. So this is a key issue for our country competitiveness, and this topic is more important than the welfare state, than uh, the citizenship uh, revenue. So we need to generate prosperity, redistribute opportunities. We need to guarantee talents equal opportunities. We need to rediscover the value of uh, merit and skills. That is why next to labor, next to, I mean, uh, detoxation, we propose uh, uh, some measures uh, to compensate for the inflation surge uh, of energy. So the National Resiliency Recovery Plan is going to give us 1.5 billion. How many times uh, we have come across uh, all over Italy with uh, a new technical institution or vocational training institutes. Well, and we always thought if we had more resources, now we have more resources. These resources need to be properly allocated all throughout the countries, and they should let us give our young people good prospects in terms of uh, future employment. So that is why resources need to be properly allocated. And again, we need uh, young people have the chance to remain in Italy. Too many times the young people from the South are obliged to go away. And so again, the political parties cannot still our young people, their future. We need truth, we need awareness, and making reforms is uh, pretty hard. So hard work is required. So we should not 
dodge this responsibility. That means talking to local administrators, mayors, and local representatives. But uh, Draghi said it clearly this morning. We should not uh, tolerate easy promises, and we should always strive for the most difficult solutions. Well, we are overwhelmed by problems, so we need to have trust to build for the future and also be humble and listen to the civil society. There is so much to be somehow done. So oppositions are useless. We need to foster teamwork. Our country delivers when it is faced with the worst situations. So we got uh, congratulations for our uh, national recovery resilience plan. So we need to keep going in that direction. And we need to offer the future generations a country to be proud uh, for. We need also to keep on a constructive way and not somehow rest on our laurels because uh, we're going still through difficult times. We need to be brave to take up challenges, but the country is able to overcome these difficulties. President Pedriga, you have uh, the last word. Okay, my vision is the following. Well, certainly our country is quite peculiar and the pandemic has been uh, somehow assessed in very different ways. Some people in Italy said that the pandemic never happened. Others said that uh, we should have had uh, just uh, eternal lockdown and our national resilience recovery plan uh, some is criticized by some people and uh, others praise it. Uh, I think that is something great, but I think that the situation has changed. So the war in Ukraine was not there when the plan was uh, undersigned. Uh, raw materials had a different cost. Uh, energy supplies uh, uh, did not get expensive. And uh, so raw materials were not so expensive. I think that uh, the national resilience and recovery plan has to be changed. So it was very well written, but now it is time to change it. I'm sorry to be so direct. I do not think that the priority is not 300 million to Cinecitta. And uh, maybe those resources should go to businesses to face uh, the uh, surge of energy costs. Some companies risk to shut down because production is getting too expensive because of the surge of energy costs. And again, I hope that everything will uh, go for the better. But President Draghi said something that is absolutely important. He said, let's differentiate the cost of gas with respect to the cost of energy. There, the, there is the energy regulatory body, and uh, it has an algorithm calculating the cost of energy. So today, if you produce power of any kind, the price, the cost of that energy is calculated according to the cost of gas. So the decoupling, the drug is said, is very important. In Austria, the megawatt hour gap is of three euro, now it's of 50 euros. So we should do something about that because then we can talk about uh, wonderful things. But if companies uh, shut down, well, we won't have much to talk about. So we need to guarantee the, uh, I mean, uh, operational status of companies. So I think that governing 
Italy is not an easy task, and especially in the short term. So we need to be extremely serious, and I can't tell you that everything will be easy. I want to be clear. I want to be transparent and say things clearly and call a spade a spade because, again, people need to be aware. I'm going back to the notion of autonomy. So autonomy should be sympathetic but also responsible. And again, I do share what uh, the mayor said. Being frank means being transparent. My, for instance, my wood surface is much higher than that of other regions, but I have much fewer rangers. Well, I don't want to make names, but I mean, there are challenges and sometimes mistakes are allowed or are possible, but then you need to try to acknowledge mistakes and try to improve things. Okay, nobody is flawless and uh, I am uh, the governor of a region and I know what it means to make mistakes, acknowledge mistakes and then to change things, but uh, this is part of the task of governing. So, and again, we should change the way energy costs are calculated. Okay, and then uh, having your European cap could also be okay. But again, let's start with the urgency, with the emergency. So we need to assist those that are in trouble but the right to work is enshrined in the Constitution. And we have another contradiction. So we have uh, the right to work, but also we have unemployment. So that is why maybe we need to adjust things, and that would be also autonomy. Okay, we need to do our best to somehow make supply and demand meet. And certainly having more autonomy at regional and local level would be advisable. And again, I think that uh, simplification is not always the key. And uh, governing is complex. Uh, easy solutions are not there, but you cannot think that leaving things as they are, things will get fixed. Thank you. Grazie. Thank you. Thank you to our guests. So I want to thank our guests. I heard a lot of common sense with no ideology. And I think that the debate was pretty pragmatic. There's a willingness to focus on problems. And in spite of the differences, I think that this was a very fruitful debate in order to somehow implement that passion for citizens that, uh, as President Fredica said, should be at the heart of any kind of policy. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, see you very soon. Thank you, and good evening. <laughs>
impresa digitale delle camere di commercio sono il punto di riferimento per tutti gli imprenditori che vogliono digitalizzare la loro impresa e approfittare delle opportunità legate all'uso delle tecnologie 4.0 per entrare a pieno titolo nell'economia digitale. Ma in che modo i PID aiutano gli imprenditori? I PID, punti impresa digitale, offrono alle imprese strumenti specifici per misurare il loro livello di maturità digitale in chiave 4.0 e definire con maggiore precisione le strategie di miglioramento. Selfie 4.0 è un questionario di autovalutazione da compilare online che restituisce automaticamente un report sui livelli di digitalizzazione dell'impresa. Zoom 4.0 è una valutazione più approfondita, svolta direttamente in azienda insieme al Digital Promoter della Camera di Commercio, che permette di definire in modo più dettagliato i percorsi di digitalizzazione da intraprendere. Digital Skill Voyager, dedicato a studenti e lavoratori, è un test per misurare le competenze digitali attraverso un gioco online, un vero e proprio viaggio nel tempo a tappe in chiave digitale. I PID realizzano incontri di informazione e informazione sulle tecnologie 4.0. Così le imprese possono acquisire un quadro più chiaro e capire come migliorare, attraverso il digitale, processi di lavoro, prodotti e servizi. I PID si avvalgono di un network di professionisti che, nel ruolo di mentor, supportano gli imprenditori nelle scelte da compiere sui temi del digitale e del change management. Attraverso i PID si viene indirizzati verso i servizi avanzati proposti dagli altri attori del network Impresa 4.0, quali i Competence Center del mondo universitario, i Digital Innovation Hub e gli ecosistemi digitali dell'innovazione delle associazioni di categoria. Tutte le principali strutture che operano a livello nazionale per favorire l'innovazione e la digitalizzazione delle imprese si trovano su atlanteic4.0.it. I PID mettono a disposizione delle imprese dei voucher per l'acquisto di servizi di consulenza, formazione e tecnologie in ambito impresa 4.0. I voucher sono erogati direttamente dalla Camera di Commercio attraverso bandi ai quali possono partecipare imprese singole o, se condividono un progetto di innovazione, organizzate in gruppo. Che aspetti a entrare nell'economia digitale? Contatta il PID della tua Camera di Commercio o vai su .impresadigitale.camcom.it
TID, punti impresa digitale delle Camere di Commercio, sono il punto di riferimento per tutti gli imprenditori che vogliono digitalizzare la loro impresa e approfittare delle opportunità legate all'uso delle tecnologie 4.0 per entrare a pieno titolo nell'economia digitale. Ma in che modo i PID aiutano gli imprenditori? I PID, punti impresa digitale, offrono alle imprese strumenti specifici per misurare il loro livello di maturità digitale in chiave 4.0 e definire con maggiore precisione le strategie di miglioramento. Selfie 4.0 è un questionario di autovalutazione da compilare online che restituisce automaticamente un report sui livelli di digitalizzazione dell'impresa. Zoom 4.0 è una valutazione più approfondita, svolta direttamente in azienda insieme al Digital Promoter della Camera di Commercio, che permette di definire in modo più dettagliato i percorsi di digitalizzazione da intraprendere. Digital Skill Voyager, dedicato a studenti e lavoratori, è un test per misurare le competenze digitali attraverso un gioco online, un vero e proprio viaggio nel tempo a tappe in chiave digitale. I PID realizzano incontri di informazione e formazione sulle tecnologie 4.0. Così le imprese possono acquisire un quadro più chiaro e capire come migliorare, attraverso il digitale, processi di lavoro, prodotti e servizi. I PID si avvalgono di un network di professionisti che, nel ruolo di mentor, supportano gli imprenditori nelle scelte da compiere sui temi del digitale e del change management. Attraverso i PID si viene indirizzati verso i servizi avanzati proposti dagli altri attori del network Impresa 4.0, quali i Competence Center del mondo universitario, i Digital Innovation Hub e gli ecosistemi digitali dell'innovazione delle associazioni di categoria. Tutte le principali strutture che operano a livello nazionale per favorire l'innovazione e la digitalizzazione delle imprese si trovano su atlante.i4.0.it. I PID mettono a disposizione delle imprese dei voucher per l'acquisto di servizi di consulenza, formazione e tecnologie in ambito impresa 4.0. I voucher sono erogati direttamente dalla Camera di Commercio attraverso bandi ai quali possono partecipare imprese singole o, se condividono un progetto di innovazione, organizzate in gruppo. Che aspetti a entrare nell'economia digitale? Contatta il PID della tua Camera di Commercio o vai su www.impresadigitale.camcom.it